Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about ZBrush Core Mini. Now this is uh, a new product in the ZBrush lineup. We've got ZBrush and we've got ZBrush Core. Now we have ZBrush Core Mini. And what this is, is meant to be sort of an introduction to sculpting. Now if you've never heard of ZBrush, it is probably the preeminent sculpting application out there. Now Blender has come huge ways in the last couple of releases in its sculpting functionality and there's other tools out there such as Mudbox and 3D Coat um, that are definitely used but the biggest one in games and in motion pictures is ZBrush and this is often used to make really high resolution high polygon meshes that would then be retopologized and used in games and the entire idea behind ZBrush Core Mini is again it's a stripped down subset with one seriously big flaw as we will see in a few minutes but first let's start with what's new here so you see here this user interface is really minimal and i love that the last time i checked out zbrush it was a mess so much crap has been accrued in there that the user interface out of the box is just unpleasant in this particular case it's pretty nice and straightforward. You've got here, we've got symmetry going on with our spherical model here. You've got a standard set of tools such as standard clay buildup, inflation pinching, snake hooking, moving, slashing, and polishing. So for example, standard brush, see here, we are just basically building up on top. We can also add in some more clay to work with. So let's add some clay strips all around like so. And we can also change the size of our brush there or using the middle mouse wheel like so. And basically let's just sort of start making a shape and then really that's that's kind of the idea here so we've done a really simple model i can use the mouse button to orbit around there we go now what i can do at any time is hold down shift and we'll engage smoothing mode like so and uh yeah you just start modeling whatever you want let's smooth that out there we go so we've got our base mesh going on here uh we want to inflate out some shapes there we go we want to, let's, let's do like a bridge of the nose of whatever the heck this thing is. Now we have made some ugly there, so let's just shift and smooth that out. Okay, this is starting to look phallic by accident. It always ends up looking phallic whenever I sculpt something. And then we can do things here. We polish things off. Snake hook, which is to kind of grab and pull with. So if you want to put some horns on that guy, you can. So there you go. We've also got quick navigation over here. So we can snap between the various different views very quickly. And as you're noticing, this is really performant. It works really quite nicely. And a lot of that boils down to ZBrush have been at this for 20 years kind of thing. They're very good at sculpting and they've basically taken their technology and made it into this subset version, this um, core mini version that is, I should have mentioned, completely free asterisk and it's available for windows and mac and it's got most of the tools that m a lot of people would need to get started with sculpting and you can do some really cool results really quickly so we started with the default um, sphere but we could also have quite as easily started with this stone mesh see there's a rough texture going on which by the way i could just start with shift and we just start smoothing it out make it into whatever we want and we can add some stuff on top for i think we still got the hook brush attached and basically you can start from whatever shape you want and go from there we've also got some very 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 simple texturing tools and i mean very simple so we can make it gold silver so we got basic colors here and then we've got color options with them but that is about the extent of it so there's no texture mapping there's no uv mapping or anything like that you've got these basic materials that you can deal with um and then over here straightforward we've got things like we can show uh, the polygon mesh or not we've got some uh, tools here for reducing the polygon count we're only at 32,000 at this point in time so we start getting over 500 we can automatically reduce it down but to get over 500 is going to take quite a bit of clay quite a bit of work but as you'll notice as I'm adding my polygon count up here so we're over 50,000 70,000 80,000 120 blah 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 we're not slowing down at all so you can really um go to town on this guy it, it's, it does perform well and i've got tools over here for like framing around changing your um where you're at zooming moving and so on everything is super crystal clear you grab this guy you will know how to use it within just a few moments so in that regard i have to give them props kudos they did a great job here so the question is when you are done what do you do with it well you've got a pair of options you can export out an image like this guy right here. And you're gonna notice we have a couple of options here. We can export out as a PSD, a ping, a bitmap, or a TIFF, all right? So those are your export options, basically capturing a render out in standard image. But we can also come up over here and we do save a project as, and you can see interestingly enough, we can save it as image files. We can save it as a GIF or a PNG or a GIF and a PNG GIF. Um, 
it's either called I, I or Image 3D or Image 3D. Those are actually kind of interesting because what they are is a standard GIF or a PNG, but it's also got the sculpt data attached to it. So they've got to be ginormous, i got to imagine. But what it allows you to do is send it to somebody and they can see it in a standard image viewer. But um, if they open it up in ZBrush, they can... Um, go ahead and actually edit the polygon data. That's a cool thing. So basically, it's a really fat image file that also contains all of the polygonal data. Cool move there. Um, the other thing that you can do is come up here. So we can grab this guy right there. That's export save file for 3D printing. You're going to notice it's available um, as an OBJ file, a wavefront object file. Go ahead and save that. So we've got it uh, saved out. I'm going to head on over to Blender, where I'd already done this demo once, as you may be able to tell. So I'm going to go ahead. We don't save, new file, get rid of my box, go ahead, import in, and then we need to get OBJ format. Every single 3D engine or um, tool or anything else, they are going to support OBJ format, by the way. Now that's a pretty dense mesh, so this is going to take a couple of seconds to load. But as you can see, you can easily export it out to your system of choice. Now. My color didn't come through, which is a little interesting, but anyways, you can bring it in. So now we are in Blender. If I really wanted to, I could go ahead, uh, select my mesh, go here, and I could just come into their sculpting tools and keep going. So very cool. Uh, very useful. In fact, it's, it's a nice, streamlined, clean modeling interface, and it's a great introduction to sculpting for those people who have had no previous sculpting experience. So... What then is the catch? Well, the catch is in the EULA, and we're going to go on in a few minutes, and I'm going to actually take you to the um, ZLogic or so the uh, ZBrush website for Core Mini, and then you're going to find me. Tell me the first time you see this condition. So we're going through the EULA. You know that thing that you click next to and next, 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 next. All right, so here we are, and that changes everything. ZBrush Core Mini is intended for educational purposes. It may not be used for commercial, professional, and other for-profit purposes. Yeah. All right. So there, that basically, uh, it's a demo and that's kind of the limiting factor here. I hope they get rid of that. I hope they open that up because those limitations, um, suck. And, and, and you know what? I get it. It's just kind of questionable. Like, am I in violation of the license? It's hard to say at this point in time. And yeah, that, that part is a little unfortunate. So it's a great introduction to sculpting, but literally that is all it is because of that non-commercial use thing. So if you want to go beyond, well, you'll notice you have these convenient buttons here, upgrade to ZBrush Core and upgrade to ZBrush. Now ZBrush is over a grand, by the way. It's got all of the bells and whistles you would need in it and probably is too much for you. So what you're going to find is you're probably going to be more interested in ZBrush Core. And we'll get to the differences in just a minute, but here we are now on the ZBrush website. You see right here, uh, Kind of just a bit more details. Kind of shows what we're talking about. Now, and tell me if you see anywhere in here that it says non-commercial. So, ZBrush experience. Take your first steps into the world of sculpting. Completely free for all users. Woohoo! Uh, freedom to create. Designed for artists of all age. Streamlined interface. Let's anyone jump right in, which we saw. And they did a very good job there. As I was mentioning earlier on, they got this really cool option that you can export regular 2D images that also contain the full 3D data. That's pretty awesome, and it is free to download. No ads, no subscriptions, no price of any kind, just endless creativity. So did you see anywhere in here where they said that it was non-commercial? Because I, I didn't. I only actually found that out by reading the EULA that nobody reads. And I think, you know what, ZBrush guys, you've really got to make that more prominent on the web page because that is a huge Huge caveat, by the way. Uh, I understand why it's there, but it just needs to be much more pronounced. All right, so here we go. This is the comparison between ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini. So here you get, you don't get Dynamesh, you don't get Z-Spheres, you don't get Mannequin, you don't get Primitives, you don't get Mesh Extract, you don't get Zizu. Um, you don't get, you don't get a lot of things, to be honest. So you are definitely stripped down. There's only eight brushes versus 36. Uh, your material stuff is a lot, clo lot lower. Um, you do get the brushes. Um, you get some limitations here going on. Your rendering is almost non-existent, except for you can save as an image. Uh, you can save as those two special uh, image formats. Ironically enough, you can't do that in ZBrush Core. But you've only got the option of export it as an OBJ, and that OBJ is decimated. That means that they've simplified the mesh. You're not getting the full resolution sculpted version, which is a limitation in general. Whereas in ZBrush Core, you can output to a variety of different formats, including Maya text format and OBJ. 
uh, and it is not decimated. Also, you can't import, but interestingly enough, with ZBrush Core Mini, you can bring in any ZBrush file. So you can also use it as a ZBrush viewer, if you so wish. Um, so that is kind of some of the limitations here. We got uh, Windows and Mac OS for both versions. It's 64-bit for both versions. Do uh, you know what the interesting thing is? I still haven't seen them say anything about commercial usage. It might be here somewhere, but I ain't seen it yet. And I went through both of those pages. So I don't know. It could be when their websites, both of their websites say nothing at all about it. The only place I saw that non-commercial tag was in the EULA. Obviously, the EULA is the legally binding document. But it's really strange that they're not making it, even in this breakdown of feature lists, you know, not useful for commercial. Yes, no. Like You, you would think that that would be there somewhere, but... Uh, you know what? I may have missed it. If you saw it there somewhere, please do let me know. Anyways, this guy is available for uh, Windows and Mac. If you've never used ZBrush sculpting before, you never sculpted at all before, it is a very gentle introduction. This is, honestly, uh, one of the easiest to use sculpting programs uh, I've used probably since Sculptress. And truth of the matter is, this is actually easier to use than Sculptress. The performance is, again, really quite good. I'm still not slowing it down as we're approaching... 250,000 active polygons. So it, it is an interesting project for sure. Uh, it is obviously meant to introduce you to ZBrush Core. I just do find it, again, a little unfortunately un unfortunate that they don't make it clear that this is for... Um, you know, non-commercial only. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of ZBrush Core Mini. Let me know what you think of that omission. Unless, of course, it wasn't an omission and you saw it somewhere and I just happened to miss it, in which case, please do let me know. Also do know, if you didn't see it in the video but is now on their webpage, it's possible that they have corrected it since this went live. Again, this just came out as I'm recording this a few hours ago. I'm going to publish this first thing tomorrow. So um, there could be some time for them to fix that oversight. Uh, one last thing to do be aware of, in order to grab it, you do need to create an account and log in with it. Also, interestingly enough, there is a lot of clicks. So you go here uh, to it. You start there. You say, yep, yeah, give it to me. So yeah, I want to download it. So you do a get started. And then you do a download. And then you do a jump in like this is weird it doesn't just bring you there so if you're thinking oh my god i'm clicking a lot of things to try to get to the download link yeah that's just the thing and you will need a zbrush account i already had one from trying out zbrush earlier so it wasn't a big effort to me but just do be aware you are going to have to sign up and then you ultimately get it in your my licenses page where you can get the download the download is at least on windows about 230 megabytes so something to be aware of yeah so that is it that is zbrush core mini again I'd love to hear what you think of it, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.